So next on stage, um, it's me, myself, uh, this time. Uh, my name is Jan Heinrich Meyer, aka Ezra, uh, in the community channels. I'm uh, working for the Dash Embassy in the Dach region, so we are focused on the German-speaking area. And I will now give you a short idea of what the DFOs, Dash-funded organizations all around the globe, are working on, and then we dive a bit deeper uh, into the adoption in our region. So. I'll jump through that very quick. You already know that Dash is instant, it's private, that we are um, resistant against those 51% uh, 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 mining attacks. Just walk uh, through it to, to remind it and, and keep it in place. And I think our road to success is being a DAO. And not only for the features uh, the miner um, are having, so with those 51% uh, per, uh, per attack resistance due to chain locks, and not only because of the master nodes, but because we split up the block reward and have this 10% in the treasury. So 10% for the people who are not familiar with Dash, maybe there are some newcomers over here, uh, from the block reward goes towards the budget. And this budget is, at the moment, something like 5,700 Dash per month. And it's being used for business development, product development, and uh, everything you can imagine. So compared to Bitcoin, we are not working for free and on our free time. We are doing this full time. So let's have a short look at some teams, and uh, some of them are here. So we already met uh, Dash Core Group over here on stage, and uh, the developers are uh, in this room too. We have a representative from the team of uh, Dash Latam. I don't know if Gabriel is in here right now, but you will be able to meet him uh, later on. They are doing merchant adoption. They are doing remittance mostly uh, to Spain. We have uh, teams in Venezuela doing merchant adoption over there. Dash News is uh, covering almost everything that happens in the Dash DAO. Uh, then Dash Nigeria, unfortunately, Nathaniel is not here today. He did not get a visa, um, so sad for me to hear that. But um, he wanted to come here and talk about uh, what they're doing in Africa. In the end, also business development, merchant adoption. We have the guys from uh, Dash Thailand over here, Felix. Over there, there he is. And uh, also Dash Next. Uh, Dash Next is focused on uh, business development all across Asia. Um, we have a team from Turkey. Is Said over here? There he is. Uh, uh, he's not on the map, but uh, they're also focused on the gaming industry, for example. And we have um, us, the Dash Embassy uh, Dach team. And this just as a short introduction for, for the team. So they are around and you can talk to them uh, the whole day. I wanted to have a, um, a look in the Dach region and how to reach mass adoption. Because I think this is, in the end, what, what we want. We want Dash to be used as digital cash at the point of sale and in e-commerce. So what do we need to do to reach this mass adoption in the beginning? German as I am, I do some research. So doing some research means we, we prepared a letter and sent out a letter to the 350 uh, cryptocurrency accepting merchants in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. We asked them if they're interested in listing Dash as a means of payment. And after that, because this would just be sales, uh, after that, we gave them a call and asked them, in which way are you accepting cryptocurrencies at the moment? Direct or do you uh, do a fiat convert? These people broke my heart. 80% of those probably 350 merchants are accepting cryptocurrencies but get paid out in fiat. I thought they were the true believers. 350 in three countries, come on guys. The reason why they are accepting cryptocurrencies, 99% of the people we had talked to on the phone said marketing. Not because of the vision. How many store owners do we have in here? Is, is someone running a store? You, are, are you accepting cryptocurrencies in your store? <laughs> true believer, true believer. That's awesome. <laughs> but we, we, we'll have a solution for that. We'll help you with that, okay. So 
In fact, when you have a guy, let's call this guy Jeff here, um, will he say, I accept cryptocurrency payments because I understand the concept and love it, or would you rather say, buy my products with whatever kind of PayPal you got and get the fuck out of here? What, what, what do you think what is correct? Buddy, you just won a Ledger Nano S sponsored by Bitconsult outside. Come over. Awesome. We will have more questions during this presentation, so please stay awake. Okay, so when we need those convert solutions, we need to analyze what's on the market. So, Vega Wallet company, most of you might uh, have heard of before, Salamantex, also POS solution with a fiat convert. They are around in the space over here too. Same for IQ Cash Now, they're over here. Um, AnyPay, they did not make it. But there are those solutions uh, that help merchants to accept cryptocurrencies. Now, when you need to buy an additional device that will cost you, let's say, 300 euro, and remember his mindset, will you spend those 200 bucks for additional hardware? Or would you say, 200 euro, maybe I should just use this money to invest in, let's say, Facebook advertising? Who was first? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 sure. Oh, wait, no, 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 I need to. Of course, they will invest in Facebook advertising. One Ledger Nano S sponsored by BitConsult for you, man. Okay, easy, easy one, easy question, wasn't it? Okay. So we need to identify the opportunity. When the people will not pay these bucks for additional hardware that offers the solution that they are looking for, we need to find another way to reach this mass adoption. So. I took a look at a survey made by the Retail Institute in 2016. And this survey says something like, there are around about one million cashier systems in Germany only. These cashier systems, so we are not talking about a payment terminal, only the cashier system, right? Um, there run about 25 companies running those uh, 1 million cashier systems. And the survey also says that 71% of the decision makers in retail plan to buy new hardware during the next years. Okay, that's easy, that's, that, 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 that's good information. And the majority of these decision makers say from retail industry think cashier systems with built-in payment terminals would improve their overall business experience. So I was thinking, huh, it's Android based. Salamantex, can you guys just install cashier system, do an upgrade on your existing hardware? And then we have the mass adoption. Sounds good, so, doesn't it? Okay, okay. So the next step when you're planning to reach mass adoption is that you need to get hit by reality. Because um, the Bundesministerium der Finanzen, so um, the, the, uh, the, the lawmakers in the end uh, in Germany, they uh, gave out a law in uh, the beginning of 2017, says that you need a specific cashier system um, to, to apply to, to, to their laws. And then I understood why those 71% of the decision makers in retail in 2016 planned to buy a new cashier system. Maybe because they were already aware of, uh, of this law. Um, the Retail Institute survey also says that the average lifetime of a cashier system is at seven years. So if 71% of the retailers, uh, retailers bought a new cashier system with an average lifetime of seven years in 2017 because of that law, will they buy additional hardware for crypto in 2019, even when it's a cashier system combined with cryptocurrencies? 
Let's ask Jeff again. I just paid 1,500 euro for a new cashier system. So, exactly, Pro probably not, probably not, okay. I have one last Ledger Nano S, sponsored by BitConsult, who was first? The crowd need to decide. You have been very fast, man. Okay, so you need to keep thinking. I heard of the solution from BitPay. They integrated into Ingenico terminal. So this would mean, uh, if we want to go in already existing hardware, that we need to deal with all the payment service providers, like Worldline, IDN, Concardis, BSPay1, all, all, all these players out there in the market. So to convince those people, oh, it's time consuming. It's, it's time consuming and uh, we want the mass adoption now. So, yeah, I keep thinking and uh, I, it, it's a pain. It's a pain, it's a pain. So everything could be so easy. You just install a wallet, send some money, that's it. But those people told us, no, it's not, it's not possible to do it in that way. So, I got a bit stuck at that, at that moment, but of course you need to go on and it came back to my mind, majority of decision makers from retail industry think that cashier systems with built-in payment terminal would improve the payment process. You've seen how easy cryptocurrency payments can be, and this is what we are working on at the moment. So you see the cashier system atop uh, uh, of this uh, of this graphic. On the one side, um, the customer w wants to pay in Dash. Just follow the dots. Um, he uh, tells the merchant that he wants to do it. Uh, the merchant selects Dash as a payment method in the cashier system. The cashier system talks to a crypto to fiat payment service provider. This payment service provider talks to the exchange. Receives the money from the exchange, um, provides um, the, the, the QR code. So wait, we, we are here, yeah, the way back. Provides uh, the, the QR code, send, uh, then uh, the customer can send the dash. The payment service provider forward that money to the exchange. The exchange send euro back to the payment service provider. Both of them are charging fees and um, then uh, the euro yeah, is going up to the cashier system, a commission and to the merchant. Shall I show you the other flowchart again, or you, can, you, can you remember the first one? Uh, I think it's a lot easier, um, but right now um, I have the feeling uh, that this might be the way to integrate those crypto to fiat payment solutions into the existing cashier systems out there, because uh, from the numbers and the research we did before, um, the retailers might not uh, invest in additional hardware and high scale. Of course I know that Salamantex is selling point of sale devices. Same for IQ Cash now, but we are talking about 1,000 merchants there. 1,000 merchants is great, but it's not a mass adoption. So, the interesting part with those cashier systems is that when they start to accept cryptocurrencies or integrate uh, those interfaces, um, that we can unleash new potentials for them. So on the one hand, the integration in those systems, it's pretty easy. You just need to, to install um, an additional app on it. And uh, I heard uh, that IQ Cash now was working on something like this and same for Salamantex. So I'm very happy that they're going the same way as I was uh, thinking about that. And um, you have, as an owner of a cashier system, a competitive advantage um, compared to, yeah, to, to other cashier systems in the market because, in, in general, a cashier system is not offering any payments. You always need those payment terminals and payment service providers. In this solution, uh, they are cut out. And because they are cut out, we have a new um, model of monetization for the cashier system. So before, the merchant hits the credit card button on the cashier system and everything payment related is in the payment terminal. Now the payment happens inside of the cashier system, so the cashier system will earn additional money that they did not earn before. And I think that's basically it. 
It's just about doing some research, identify problems, find solutions, and then bring together uh, the right people. And maybe Jeff in future will say, yeah, I accept crypto payments because it's easy and has advantages compared to, for example, credit cards. And if he does so, he might even have a closer look at the whole idea of cryptocurrencies in future and we might be able to educate those merchants so that they not only integrate cryptocurrencies for marketing reasons uh, in future. But uh, we will see how this turns out. Our next steps um, on this way are um, yeah, c connecting the dots in the end. So uh, we are bringing together uh, the crypto payment industry and uh, the people from the traditional um, payment industry. Um, therefore, we are cooperating uh, with uh, GS1. GS1 is Global Standards, one of uh, the biggest, con uh, biggest companies no one ever heard of, but um, they are providing the EAN code on every product, for example. Uh, they are funded by the retail industry and the payment industry. So I think it's a good uh, cooperation partner to bring those two worlds, crypto and uh, the traditional uh, industry together. We are part of Bitcom, which is um, the digital association in Germany. So everything connected uh, to, to digital stuff, whatever it is, when it's payments or I don't know what else is digital, then it's connected to Bitcom. They're doing a lot of lobbying and they're in contact um, directly with the, with the governance. Um, we are also part of um, other associations to make our voice heard there and connect uh, with, the, with the old economy, let's say it in that way. And um, right now uh, we are in talks with the BaFin to get a regulatory classification. BaFin is the German version of the SEC and uh, maybe even a letter that states, oh, private send, it's just decentralized mixing. Because when you want to interact with all these traditional companies, you need this paper, uh, paperwork done. So um, in the end, that's basically it. My name is there again. I think you all know the website, dash uh, minus embassy.org. If not, take a look at that, and um, yeah, I'm happy to answer your questions if there are any. No questions is good, I guess. I guess. I will, I will provide a link to that presentation so you can have a look at the retail survey, for example, on yourself again. And um, yeah, if there's uh, anything else you, uh, you're interested in, I'll be around here. And also our partners will be around here. So in the afternoon, we will have uh, presentations from Salamantex, from IQ Cash Now, from Coinify, from Utrust, because these companies are the ones that will help us to reach mass adoption together with the old industry. I think there is no way around that for now. And then we get rid of that. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. So just, just, <laughs> just, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Okay, thank you again.